Welcome to Satisfactory and update 4 and the new series in the Rocky Desert, which is an area that I have missed very, very dearly since it is my favorite place to start in the game. Now, those of you who have followed my channel for uh, some time and haven't looked at the uh, live stream uh, episodes that I've posted, and I can understand if that is not everyone's cup of tea considering the length of those episodes, you might remember that this is the area where I had my uh, update 3 base where we had all of the rather tall um, stackable conveyor port belts going over to the sorting system over here and then going down there or rather down here and then all the way down there and we had the copper outpost over at that little outcropping there and we had the main base area with that massive mall down there. Now I am going to implement a quite a bit of different building techniques in this series but sadly I, I don't have all that much uh, novel content to present as of yet as of everything that I'm doing currently is just uh, building quickly and efficiently so that I can get to the uh, higher tiers as quickly as possible. And I currently have 22 hours on this save game and uh, I have opened the milestones. I have opened all of the tier 0 milestones, all of the tier 1 milestones. Skipping the jump pads one, I'm going to uh, grab that later on, uh, but I don't want to spend these resources for it right now. Tier 3, we have opened all of these, and in Tier 4, I am set to open the advanced steel production first thing in the next stream. And then I'll also open the efficiency, efficiency checker, which is a mod that I'm using, uh, that I've promised that I will show in the stream. I'll show that to you guys as well. In the stream this is a very useful mod and it doesn't really change anything just a quality of life so if the mod breaks it's not a problem and of course i'll also unlock the uh, hypertubes but before i can do that i need to uh, get some encased industrial beams and then it's time for the space elevator our uh, uh, phase two parts probably is going to be a little bit time consuming so uh, I started somewhere down in the desert, and of course I ran up here because four pure iron nodes and several pure limestone nodes, and even though the copper node that I'm using up there is impure, this area is just too good to uh, not use as a starting base. There are also uh, some normal copper nodes down there. I'm using one of them. There are two of them that are untapped. Uh, I think we'll basically get by with three normal copper nodes for quite some time especially if i use the iron wire uh, alternate recipe so as you can see this is not my usual building style this is what we call temporary building style or tentacly building style or someone might also call it spaghetti but i, I like the tentacly uh, building style instead so this is a pure limestone node it's outputting 120 per minute and i should upgrade the belts but yeah. As a matter of fact, I think I should do that right away because that way I will get more efficient uh, production of concrete here. So I've got three assemblers or constructors making concrete, which I didn't even consider back when I built this. That uh, I'm not going to get all those 120 out of that miner, so would have sufficed with one and a half. I built three. But now it's uh, done, so we have a container here that is taking in the concrete, and yeah, I'm gonna need a lot of concrete as per usual, but I'm not sure how I'm gonna do the foundations in this space. I have built somewhat of a tentative second floor there, but again, this is the starting area, and this is not exactly where I want to have the main base, so I'm not sure. Things will progress, and I will post episodes like this one in the future as well, so... Uh, you you guys that are not interested in watching the uh, long play series 
or even for those of you who are watching both, uh, this is going to be more of a, a summarized what have I done since the last time style series. And this is actually the companion series, not the other way around where I had the streams as the companion series. But I'll just release this as a separate uh, playlist and separate series, of course. So what have I done here? Well, I've basically just set up each of these two miners with uh, 120 ore output to go to each of their separate two uh, lines of four smelters. And not all of them are in use because I have only built what I need to build here. So I have two constructors making iron plates. I have two constructors making screws using the cast screw alternate recipe. I have two constructors making iron rods. And these are for the assemblers over here, where we have two assemblers making reinforced iron plate. And we have two assemblers that are making the baby Borg cubes, also known as the modular frames. These I needed to unlock the milestone that unlocks uh, basic steel. So. Over here, I've done the same thing. I've connected up these two uh, nodes to smelters, but they are not currently being used for anything. So these are not really doing anything. Uh, some of them are even unpowered, which I'm not sure why. Uh, I probably disconnected them to save some power when I was uh, depending on biofuel. Up there, we have a very, very simple setup with uh, a copper. I'll uh, run up there is quite limited what you can get out of, a, of an impure node uh, without overclocking and when you only have mark one uh, and also i'm not really that interested in overclocking impure node unless i really really need the uh, raw material that's really something that happens in the end game not at this stage i'm gonna quickly just put down some foundations here because otherwise this will be annoying. So I have two constructors making a wire and basically 30 copper ore is what that thing over there will supply me with each minute so 30 copper ingots is what I have which means that two constructors making wire is what I can have so I'm making 60 wire per minute. One of them I'm sending to this container and as you can see that's plenty because I don't use that much wire so this is absolutely enough for uh, just starting out. The other one is just directly connected up to a, a cable assembler. It, that one requires 60 wire per minute, so I'm only supplying with half, but uh, that's also not a problem, really. Never be afraid of uh, undersupplying something if you just need to get something in your uh, storage. And that's more or less what I have up here. I haven't built anything else in terms of nodes. One thing that I have done, which is uh, an important uh, thing to note, is that I have used the satisfactorycalculator.com site to edit in hard drives, 200 of them, which I believe is more than I need, but I just don't want to mess with the expiration. I've hunted hard drives five times or six times now, and I really didn't want to have to spend a lot of time doing that because I want to build. Um, now, I'm not going to do that in terms of, uh, of all episodes uh, or all series I'm doing on Satisfactory. But for this one, since it's back to back with the uh, Dune Desert series that I uh, ended, I felt that, right, I'm just going to do that and uh, hard drive hunting I can do that in another series. It's not a problem. I have a small mini mall here. Uh, of course, these are not being filled, so I have some biofuel, solid biofuel. I have some rotors lying around. I have some reinforced iron plates. I have some iron plates, and I have some iron bolts because those are the basic materials that I need. I have a sink set up with a storage chest uh, attached to it uh, so that if I have anything overflowing, I can just put it into there and get some coupons for that. 
And I also have an awesome shop behind there where I have unlocked uh, walkways, factory railings, factory ladders. I haven't unlocked any walls yet. I've unlocked the wall power outlets and the double ramp foundations expansion pack and the corner ramp pack. I have not unlocked the inverted ramp yet. That's on my list of things that I need. I haven't bothered unlocking this and I probably won't bother unlocking this either because it's just not for me. Uh, statues, I've never even unlocked any of these. I should try to make that a goal for this series. I don't bother with the coffee cup. Uh, some might find me a heretic for that, but yeah. I might actually install the, uh, the no hands mod, which lets me holster the weapon, because I I use the uh, Xeno Basher. Um, oh, and yes, I did beeline for the Caterium uh, node that is uh, somewhere out there. It should be right over there, so that I could get the Blade Runners as soon as possible. Uh, that was a dark way to say as soon as possible, but... And I also... Got the uh, Xeno Basher very quickly when I got the chance because I like that. But I'm kind of immune to that thing being in my view, so I don't see it. To me, it's literally impos uh, invisible. Uh, I've just tilted it out. I don't know why, but I'll use the nut to uh, improve visibility. Now, down here... We have a small copper outpost set up uh, over here, as you may have noticed from when I was uh, looking down from the base. And uh, that copper outpost is very, very basic as well. Uh, it's literally responsible for one thing and one thing only, and that is copper sheets. So it's a, it's a normal copper node producing uh, 60. Uh, copper ore per minute. I haven't done any kind of beautification. I just built the foundations and stuck down the miner and put up the smelters and set down the constructors. Split it up like this into two smelters, 30 each per minute, which gives me 60 copper ingots. And then those go to three constructors, which take 20 per minute to then produce 10 each per minute, which gives me 30 copper sheets per minute. And as this container proves, that is sufficient. I have more than enough. This one I can take away. Bring with me back home. I have more than enough copper sheets. I needed those for uh, the eco power, which is where we are headed next. Of course, I do miss the train lines because I have to have uh, power cables going all across the landscape. Uh, so, train networks is, of course, going to be featured again, especially now that I feel a lot more confident about the quirks and annoyances that trains involve. So, especially when I get the hover pack, building trains should be a lot easier and a lot more comfortable than it was for me back in the Doom Desert series. It was a lot of... Uh, struggles involved with building the trains, especially initially, because they are... they do have their quirks. However, I did watch the uh, Coffee Stain... Uh, or at least I watched parts of the official Coffee Stain uh, Twitch stream today, and uh, Snoot mentioned that there is uh, an update that will come I don't know if it's going to be part of the update 5, which might be update 1, or rather version 1.0, or if it's going to be something in between, like we had the update 3.5 with the um, packagers, and uh, Mark Pipes, I believe, came in that. That remains to be seen, but the train... Uh, will get collision. Uh, they will get uh, an overhaul so that they have less quirks and less oddities. And we will also get signals. So if you are building a base and you're going to use trains, it would be a good idea to actually make 
uh, a train line that is ready for that. Of course, it's probably going to take some time until they release such a massive update. Um, so you should have plenty of time, but I would suggest that you have uh, at least a double track train line system and uh, that you uh, make sure that you have uh, the necessary requirements that will be needed for having a train system with signals in place because of course that also means that we will get train collisions which will probably be an explosive affair which might be inconvenient or it might be fun depends on your point of view although i know that i would not be happy if i had a train full of say alkaline aluminium sheet and uh, that train blew up that would probably annoy me just a little bit so this is the chosen location once again uh, i mean this is a very good location for a coal power plant so this is where i chose to build my coal power plant I have uh, 16 coal generators up here and uh, six water extractors, as you can see. And I learned something very important that I want to share with you guys in that regard. Because I could not, but I could not for the life of me understand what the heck was wrong with the setup out here because I did not get enough coal into the uh, coal generators. They were burning the coal immediately, and then they, my my uh, the the um, gray line, the capacity line, it was a mess of uh, up and down, up and down, up and down, and uh, I really confused me. What the heck is going on here? Now, of course, this is due to the update in Update 4, where uh, all power buildings that are not biomass generators um, will burn their fuel at 100% all the time. So, I spent a bit of time being confused about that and wondering, what on earth am I going to do here? Then I noticed that one side, that is the side that I am not na on now, um, filled up the generators and I was wondering what the heck is going on here why is one side filling up and not the other one where I discovered that I hadn't connected one of the pipelines from the water extractor so this side wasn't receiving enough water which then led to the very simple conclusion if you are going to build a coal generator setup don't hook up the water until all of the coal generators are fully saturated with coal. Then hook up the water. Now if you need some power to lessen the strain on your, uh, your um, biomass generators, I have kept these five here. Uh, and they are not connected to anything. You can see the power line here is non-existent. So they will remain at 301 leaves each until I need to connect them up, if ever. And that is in case I need to kickstart all of these things again, because this is enough power to kickstart the two miners and the six water extractors and the pumps that are involved in this setup. So what I should have done was connect these up and let the miners fully saturate all of the uh, coal power plants and then hook up the water. I could have connected up water to like two of them on each side so that I could shut off the bio. Uh, I, I think one of them on each side would be sufficient because they produce uh, 75 each and these produce 120 and I think I needed something like 110. Uh, it was around there. None of the water extractors are clocked in any way. Uh, I didn't have access to the um, stackable pipeline conveyors at the time. I think I might have gotten access to those. Yes, I just got access to those with the um, Mark III Logistics milestone. That was one of the final things that I unlocked in the last um, uh, stream, which would be episode 4 in the stream uh, uh, main series, I guess. Um, so, 
I needed some pumps here, uh, and this is uh, the layout that I went with for the uh, pipelines for the water. So these three are connected to one side, these uh, coal generators there, and these three here are connected to the generators on the other side. And one of these pipes will have 240 as a maximum flow rate, and the other one will have 120 which adds up to 360, which is exactly what is needed for eight generators. I take the second pipe, it doesn't really matter which one, whether it's the one from uh, that brings up 120 or it's the one that brings up 240, and I splice it in at the fifth generator. Um, strictly not necessary to do it exactly on the fifth it should also work on the fourth or it should work equally as well if you just make a, a full circle of pipe but i find that it in here is simple and easy and that's exactly what i've done on the other side as well so that's the uh, coal power plant uh, shouldn't be a, a massive surprise to anyone who has seen me play before but uh I hope that it is of some use, especially those tips that I gave in regards to not connecting up water to all of them at once and let them saturate before you do that. It sure as heck confused me, so... Now let's head out to the uh, final uh, part that I've built, uh, or final outpost that I've built so far. And that would be the steel smelting production works. Um, this is a place to be careful. Because it's uh, not a good thing to fall down there. I tried driving up the tractor through that poison field. That, that didn't work very well. I uh, died three times and had to reload. Uh, so uh, that's why I built the ramps there to get up. Because uh, I needed to get up. And... Uh, Obviously, I wasn't successful getting up through the poison field. You can get through it from the top if you're driving the tractor, but you cannot get through it from the uh, bottom, it seems. Uh, might have been that I did it on, on a wrong incline or something. Because I think I was able to do that when I played here the last time. But that's a long time ago, so I don't remember exactly like what vector I, uh, I drove on. But I might also be misremembering, because I'm not sure. It's such a long time ago now that, uh, yeah. Let's uh, just drive through all of this. Uh, there are some bees over here that I don't want to uh, wake up, so... Uh... Now, I haven't bothered opening any of the drop pods, and I probably won't bother opening any of them. But I have taken advantage of uh, some of the uh, goodies that are left around them, of course. That's always useful. Yeah, we can make a quick pit stop here. This is the Caterium node. I haven't done anything here except mine the Caterium. Uh, and, of course, kill the uh, stuff that were here. I left four portable miners in case I need more Caterium, but I haven't needed that yet. Also picked up the slug that was over there. And you might wonder about that floating foundation there. Um, that floating foundation is because I built the foundations out from the base because I want the foundations to be on the same grid. Now the ramp that I built here is not on that grid, nor is the ramps underneath the coal power plant. They are not on the same grid as the main base. I plan to tear down that coal power plant eventually and use the coal for more important things but for now uh, I need the coal so but I didn't bother uh, pulling foundations out for that so I basically built a long line of foundation going out into the desert and then had that go all the way over to where we're going and I left one and that one that I left there is so that I can pull foundations in here so that I can have a small uh, outpost here. This is a pure node of Caterium, so that will uh, keep us fed with our need for a quick wire, which is going to be required, of course. I might have to uh, take the quick wire away from here because I probably want to use the... Uh, a pure Caterium ingot recipe in the refineries. 
Uh, but that's very likely uh, quite a ways off because that takes a lot of refineries and I would have to set up a proper fuel uh, production before I get to that point. So don't expect that to happen within a week. But I will set up some uh, quick wire at least because quick wire is useful for building Mark II power poles and uh, also for some of the researchers in, in the MAM. I, I think there are some other uses that I don't remember offhand here. Out here is the steel smelting outpost, and these foundations that are out here, they are on the exact same uh, grid as the main base because of that uh, thing I did with pulling foundations all the way over here and then throw them down again because it looked rather silly with a large line of foundations in midair without anything attached to them. So we have a ramp going down underneath here where we have uh, two coal mines. They are on uh, normal nodes. So they give 60 each per minute. In addition to that, there are two more coal mines over uh, at the other uh, side of this little outcropping here. But I haven't bothered doing anything with them yet. So you can see there's a normal coal node here and there is a normal coal node here. Uh, so I will eventually tap these as well. In addition to that, there's a opera node uh, up on the top of this uh, rock. I think that is a normal one. Uh, so that one will probably also be tapped at some point. And there is a pure coal node uh, just about where the uh, reticule is right now, protected by a small spitter, and there should be a large spitter somewhere around there. Um, I used the... Uh, what are they called? I used them before. Frame foundations for the uh, lift. This is something that I'm I'm experimenting with a different build style, so I might use frame foundations more in this setup. However, uh, that remains to be seen. Now, before I show off this part of the factory, I have to quickly run to the bathroom, so I will be right back with you. There we go. Okay, so I'm not really sure if I'll use these frame foundations. I mean, it does clip a little bit with those um, uh, cross beams, but at the same time, I'm not sure if I mind that clipping because it kind of look co looks cool to have that in there. And if if you then add like uh, glass walls on this and have the um, I don't have those yet because I haven't unlocked them. But if you use the uh, the walls. Um, the ones that have conveyor belt openings on these, it might actually be quite cool. Um, it remains to be seen what I'll do, but like seeing these through glass might be uh, might be very interesting. Uh, as a because that is also one of the things that I want to do in this factory. I want to experiment with different building styles, uh, and I also have some plans for building very differently from what I have done previously. So this is a pure node of iron. Gives me 120 per minute. And when I worked on this, I the MAM did not want to give me the... Uh, the I should start that. The MAM did not want to give me the uh, solid steel ingot recipe, this one. So I was like, oh no, I'm going to have to do this like a temporary thing and then I'm going to have to go back here when I get the recipe. But just as I completed whatever it was I was doing here and the mum said, mum analysis, mum analysis complete, I got the recipe. I was like, thank you. The difference is quite substantial. Um, for three foundries, using this, the uh, solid steel, they each take 40 per, which means that I can have three foundries uh, with my setup here, because I'm producing 120 coal and I'm producing 120 iron ingots. And that gives me three times 60 steel ingots, which is 180, of course. Whereas if I had go, if I would have to use the basic recipe, that would have been a little bit more skewed. As 
can see if I do 120 divided by 45, I would have had machines working at 2.66 uh, rate instead. And uh, 45 per minute. Um, I would have ended up with 120 ingots because it's it's basically a one to one ratio. Because if you can do these first, you get a bonus 60 ingots. Uh, so I think the um, I think that means that the efficiency of this, uh, not counting power usage and additional space, but just raw efficiency, is around a hundred and fifty percent. Don't quote me on that. I might be entirely wrong, but. 120 times 2 is 240, and then that would be 200%. And since 180 is the middle ground between there, I would presume that that would end up with being 150%. But that is only the raw production. So there is also the matter of factoring in the space that these take up, um, which... Personally, I do not consider that to be a massive problem. You should also factor in the power that these take, but I mean, 4 megawatts per. If you are in a really tight situation, that might be a problem, but then I would say it's time to go build another line of 8 coal generators. Uh, or maybe even uh, um, overclock a couple of things and... Uh, that is, overclock a couple of generators and, and try to get more coal in. But, uh, then again, there are many different situations you can find yourself in, in the game, and you might also have different challenges. Like, you might, for instance, have a challenge to not use any alternate recipes. That aside, uh, finally, I just directly connected two of these foundries to each of these two constructors that are making steel beams. Uh, those very, very precious steel beams that I can use to build Mark III belts. So I have two of those for a total of 30 steel beams per minute, and those are putting the steel beams into this storage. Uh, the other one, uh, the other foundry that is, is connected up to these two constructors, and these are, of course, making steel pipes. But these take 30 per minute, so two of them would be uh, the appropriate here. Uh, which means I get 40 steel pipes per minute, and those, of course, go into this container here. Now, this means that I have to go out here to pick up the uh, the beams and the pipes when I need them. But as I am going to open hypertubes very soon, uh, that's not really a problem. Uh, in lack of having a train network, I will be using a hypertube network... Uh, just uh, temporarily, which I might do um, the foundation building for. Like, I might build it on foundations, actually, uh, and then have those foundations be converted into the train network eventually. But we'll see. That is about what I had to show you today, though. Uh, though, not thou. So, there isn't really anything else that I have done. Uh, I'm not going to tell you guys, I might have already mentioned, but I'm not going to tell you guys what recipes I have unlocked in the MAM, because I'm going to, going to unlock all of them anyways. Uh, you'll see which ones I use and which ones I don't use, and uh, I think that's sufficient actually uh, if you uh, if you are around uh, and you like watching live streams I would of course be very happy to uh, have you pop in on the live streams I usually stream during uh, late European time evening uh, starting between a little bit I don't have a set schedule but I usually start between sometime like 8 uh, p.m. and 11 p.m. Uh, Central European summer time. So that would be 
if we go from the current uh, GMT, which is actually... No, actually, it would be GMT plus 2. If we go by the GMT uh, standard, that would be uh, between 6 and 9 uh, GMT. Uh, but yeah, time zone conversions. Uh, uh, even uh, the UK, which usually usually is in G GMT, uh, is themselves in plus one now due to daylight savings, uh, or rather the opposite, uh, due to being in summertime. So that aside, if you uh, uh, oh yeah, you'll find the link to my Twitch channel in the description of course uh, and you can leave a follow and you will be notified uh, there's also a role in the discord server which you can get in the uh, FAQ and rules channel I believe I think it's that channel uh, which you can be pinged in the discord server if you want to be pinged I, I don't like using the everyone ping uh, in my discord server so I try to avoid using that uh, unless it's something really important um, yeah, if you have any questions or comments, of course, please do feel free to leave those in the uh, comment section. Uh, and uh, I will, of course, since I've talked about the Discord server, I will, of course, uh, happily invite you to join the Discord server as well. Uh, you'll find the link to that in the description of the video as, vo as well. Now, for my stream series, uh, I'm doing something that I usually don't do. I'm updating the description of each of the videos so that not just the title reflects what I'm doing, but the description of the videos give a more uh, detailed, in-depth description of what has happened throughout the video. Uh, so even though they are long, uh, if you if you look at the description, you can see what I've been doing in, in that stream. And if there's something that you're interested in, in looking at in depth, uh, the description will tell you what has happened in the video. I've also made a call out as uh, those of you who uh, subscribe to the channel updates uh, for some community help, because it would be very nice to have those uh, long videos uh, segmented into chapters and YouTube has a very uh, nice and easy way for me to do that by just adding timestamps either to a pinned comment or to, uh, to the description of the video. Uh, but I don't have the time to watch through the streams myself to find those various timestamps of when I'm doing this or that. So uh, if you do watch the long stream episodes, uh, or the episodes that are the the, uh, the post stream episodes and you haven't seen my community post um, then do take a look at my community post tab uh, on my channel uh, and there's a post there about how to do it if you want to contribute uh, to that if you do contribute I will of course credit you but that is alas all I can do so it would be volunteer work, credited volunteer work, of course, um, and I would be very grateful for it, but I can also understand if if that doesn't happen, so, but it would be nice if it happens, so I would be very, 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 very grateful. But for now, thank you all so very much for joining me here, and I will see you all in the next episode. Uh, that might be a few days away, of course, because I will only post these when I feel that I have something relevant to show. So I will see you all then.